Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster back here on this uh, wonderful Wednesday night, November 1st, 2023. It's about 10.54 p.m. California time. Uh, latest activity here on the globe. Let's go ahead and see what we have going on across the area. Uh, we did see some movement kicking up into the area around the Java Trench, Indonesia Islands area. This region did see a 6.1 earlier this afternoon about 36 kilometers deep latest one in this area 4.6 a little bit of deeper movement back building here across the area around the banda sea as far as the west coast activity goes let's see what we got going on a little bit of movement uh, up along the coast range here of northern cal also on the plate boundary itself it looks like a couple of smaller quakes here across the san andreas fault nothing major going on out here for now Got a 1.3 coming in in the last hour around Santa Barbara. As uh, far as the rest of Southern California goes, a handful of earthquakes. Nothing major going on out here for uh, tonight. Up into the Pacific Northwest, still seeing some activity around Mount Rainier and also Mount St. Helens. Let's go ahead and double check the uh, trimmer map out here tonight and see what we have for Cascadia trimmer. 100 and 26 epicenters of trimmer here mostly uh, northern california oregon area uh, that's going to be some trimmer activity down into the cascadia subduction zone still looking at quiet conditions here though for the most part uh, it's been a little slow in the cascadia trimmer since about august of last year so we'll see if this kicks back up or not uh, far as the uh, cascadia trimmer goes but for now just uh, a handful of trimmers down there into the subduction zone across yellowstone national park a couple earthquakes being reported here earlier this morning uh, let's double check the yellowstone overview here from is this thing on.org pretty cool site when it comes to uh, just looking at the uh, visual aspect of the layouts here of the seismograph stations at yellowstone there's some of that earthquake activity earlier this morning a handful of earthquakes there as you can see there's probably a lot more than the uh what were they stating about four uh, i could probably triple that i would say in terms of earthquake activity there's a lot more than four earthquakes here in this little time period uh, but that was about it it had about uh, maybe 25 minutes or so of intense earthquake activity uh, and then that just disappeared not anything large just a, a lot of earthquake activity in a short amount of time there uh, smaller magnitudes of course but since then things have died off not a whole lot of earthquake activity currently taking place here uh, since that morning activity. Rest of the country here, well, what you see here is what you got. Not a whole lot of movement here, uh, mostly around the oil fields out here around Texas and Oklahoma area. The eastern portion of the country looks quiet for now. Not a whole lot going on across the New Madrid seismic zone either. Uh, one earthquake here off the coast of Guatemala. This earthquake coming in just shortly after that six-pointer that struck over here. So a little bit of adjustment going on. Move one piece of the puzzle and you get some uh, adverse effects there thousands of miles away. This earthquake striking into the uh, Middle America Trench, about 60 kilometers deep there. Nothing else showing up there in that region, at least according to the USGS. And uh, look at the earthquake 3D globe here. Shows that five-pointer, about the only one specifically in this area. Uh, with a handful of uh, earthquakes up and down the area from earlier uh, this morning. South America region still seeing some activity, it looks like. Let's see what we got going on down here. Uh, a couple fours going on, although EMSC looks like there may be, uh, uh, kind of looks like there's a little bit larger magnitude in there. It looks like a 5.0 showing up there from the EMSC model. Uh, but for the most part, things are... Uh, calming down there slightly from the activity that stirred up that 6.6 that stirred up here a couple days ago uh, puerto rico trench up here not a whole lot going on one earthquake though all right smack dab uh right prior to the subduction zone area 3.7 34 kilometers deep from tonight Let's see what's going on out here in the beautiful big big blue pacific i don't know if it's blue or not certain areas may look blue uh, a little bit of activity stirring up around Mauna Loa and also over here around the western edge of the Big Island. Pretty deep earthquake activity. That's got to do with the Pacific Plate uh, in the hotspot region here. Not a whole lot going on for the Kilauea Volcano. 
Uh, let's double check that because I don't think we uh, seen the update this morning far as the latest uh, status update uh, from the USGS. This one was put out today. Uh, Kilauea Volcano is currently not erupting and it looks like uh, they're just continuing to talk about the unrest as far as earthquake activity and the potential for eruptive activity uh, in the coming weeks or months. No guarantee when it's going to happen. Could be months down the road. Could be the middle of next year. Could be tomorrow. We have to watch for earthquake activity. And of course, inflation data does show a lot of what's going on below the surface area as well. far as magma intrusion. Going to double check the uh, inflation data here real quick around the Kilauea Volcano on the Big Island. It still looks like we're just uh, leveling out here for the most part. This is the past two days. Showing rather uh, steep deflation events going on. But the overall trend still shows some elevated activity here. We'll continue to watch that though. See if this peaks back up peaks back up or not in terms of uh, maybe seeing some further uh, intrusion of magma there to the uh, plumbing system below. Alright, let's get back here to the USGS map. Uh, Alaska seeing some activity out here in the last 24, but nothing major. These are all generally small microquakes across the area. Same for the Western Pacific out here. Uh, aside from the six-pointer in the in Indonesia Islands area, not a whole lot going on further up north across the Java Trench. See what the uh, EMSC model here is reporting. Pretty quiet up here across this area. Uh, now, I know we did see a 5.1. I believe that was earlier this morning or late last night here. A little bit further into the Andaman Sea, about 5 o'clock this morning it looks like. Uh, that still leaves some seismic gap here across the area of the Java Trench. Uh, a lot of times when we see some moderate movement uh, and some larger activity, you got to watch the uh, middle point ground out here in, uh, in between these two zones. So possible we could see some activity ramp up here overnight into the Java Trench. Uh, but still... This area around the Solomon Islands area really hasn't seen any major adjustment following that, uh, well, that large, deeper earthquake activity uh, a few days ago now when they had that 6.5. So still kind of watching this. I mean, we had a little activity, some 4s and some 5s around the region here in the last 24 hours, but uh, I don't know, still kind of keep an eye on that area. Uh, regions out here across the Middle East and the Mediterranean well, not a whole lot going on. Looks like uh, some uh, activity from earlier this morning in Iran. A little bit of activity in Afghanistan as well. Uh, look at the EMSC model here. It does show some twos and threes out here scattered out and about. Still seeing some activity up here across the Rec James Ridge. From that uh, volcano area, uh, the Rec James volcano region here, looks like that's still sitting at a yellow status. Let me refresh this and see if uh, anything's changed up here. Uh, the last eruption specifically around this area uh, was back in 1240 uh, CE. Common era, right? Uh, so a little bit of time has passed since then, uh, definitely. And the uh, reoccurrence intervals here are roughly around a thousand years or so. Uh, so we could be looking at uh, some activity stirring up out there. There's definitely a lot of underground activity, as you can see. Maybe some hydrothermal plants out there as well. Um, yeah, goodness. Humans in their creative ways, right, of uh, generating some energy. But we'll continue to check back on that if anything uh, changes there. South Sandwich Trench got a, uh, looks like a 5.0 coming in earlier this afternoon. Aside from movement up in uh, Iceland and the uh, South Sandwich Trench, the Atlantic is pretty quiet. All right, let's see what else we got here. Um, I think we covered Northern California pretty good here. Not a whole lot going on, goodness. Well, let's uh, double check space weather, see what's going on as far as any flaring activity goes. Notice we did have, in the past couple days, some very low-grade M-flare activity. Looks like we're coming down from a C-flare event right now. Potentially from a far side sunspot region. Notice this flaring going on here across the well eastern limb of the sun. Uh, and that's above this area though. So even though this is uh, looks like it's right on the side, it, was, it looks like it's much further uh, around the eastern limb of the sun. So this could be a fairly active region that we're going to have to keep an eye on here in the coming days as it uh, 
rotates further into view. Now, I don't think it's going to be this sunspot here. I think it's going to be associated more uh, with this further uh, one that's much further back there, uh, which isn't named yet. We do have 3477 down here. That is an active region, but that's going to be this area right here. There's another region way back there that's you just barely see that sea flare activity. We'll watch for that in the coming days, and uh, that will have a a newly assigned number. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, magnetograms of what we do have to deal with here. Still seeing uh, this area down here looking fairly complex. A lot of different intermixing here of the colors. It's good to see the sun coming back to life there after, well, I thought we were going to drop into solar minimum. Everything just went out like a light bulb there for uh, about a week with um, hardly any, any flaring activity and, and sunspots were di just diminishing like crazy. Now it looks like we're on the up and uh, looks like things could get interesting here in the coming days with some newer active regions coming around the bend. So we'll continue to watch this and uh, see how the sun wants to behave. Right now, 85% chance for a C flare, M flare at 35, X flare around 5% chance. And uh, for now, no major aurora events forecasted there in the three-day forecast. Looks pretty green, but not a whole lot of greenery in the sky. All right, uh, numerical models here. Now, I know we have some rain coming in to the Pacific Northwest and Northern California. Not going to get as much rain as the folks up there into Washington and Oregon, but... Uh, the next couple runs here do show some uh, storms drifting down further into Northern California. And this weather pattern should stick around for a little bit. I'm glad to see things looking uh, active out here across the West Coast. Now we are entering into an El Nino phase. Uh, and that means stormier conditions here across, well, I would say about... Reading southward here in Northern California, southward. Southern California should have a pretty wet year. We are looking at a strong El Nino event. So most of the time here, Southern California gets in on the action as well. So that's good news. Uh, for the folks up in the Pacific Northwest, it means drier conditions and warmer. Uh, so if there's any droughts going on up there, that's probably going to amplify uh, throughout this winter. Uh, pending... Uh, the El Nino follows previous strong El Nino events. You know, not all the time uh, do they follow one another, but we'll see how it plays out. Uh, there's some of that uh, moisture coming into the Pacific Northwest and California. Uh, once we get further into the month of November, this is a little sketchy. Not for sure if this is going to be just a massive blob of high pressure out here. Things can change, that's for sure. But uh, we'll continue to watch and uh, provide some updates out here. Um, I want to go over here to the windy map and show you guys precipitation uh, accumulation amounts here for the Pacific Northwest. It looked pretty wet here. Um, okay, got that. Also, there's a big storm going on out here. Did you guys see that? Uh, oh, back over here uh, around the... Uh, area of Ireland and these regions up here, England area, looking at some massive uh, storm systems brewing up there. The, the uh, wind gusts are quite high, almost hurricane strength, oh, above hurricane strength wind gusts up there across portions around Ireland and the UK and uh, France area getting in on uh, quite a bit of uh, active weather as well. That's going to that's going to create a little havoc up there. Just a massive bomb cyclone here. you got low pressure, and that is followed up by the jet stream into this area. These guys are uh, uh, getting slammed over there. But I want to go over here to the Pacific Northwest and check out the rainfall accumulation uh, for the folks here in the Pacific Northwest. Now, this is just the next three days. Notice that uh, there's the jet, Pacific jet out here right now. Uh, it is currently aimed at the Pacific Northwest, but uh, throughout the winter time, this will probably drop further south and uh, really amplify the the wet weather conditions out here across the southern portion of the country, and that includes areas down here across the uh, southeast as well. But next three days, uh, I want to bring up the next ten days or so. Look at some of these precipitation amounts up here across the coast. 
of Oregon and Washington talking about six inches of rainfall accumulated. Uh, certain areas up there around the northwestern corner of uh, Washington, maybe 10 inches of rain, close to 10 inches it looks like. Uh, the valleys, of course, after the uh, uplift um, uh, creates that convection there, uh, kind of drains out the clouds. The areas of the valleys get a little bit less rain and then they build back up again here across the mountain range, squeezing out some more moisture. But valley should get some good rain up there as well. Well, I, I don't like this rain shadow here around Chico. This is the next 10 days and it's only showing just barely a quarter of an inch of rain. So I'm hoping this is wrong. Northern California over here, going to be wet one, but uh, not a whole lot here across the interior portion of California. But um, hopefully this changes here. I'm, I don't really like the drier conditions. Um, let's see here. So we'll just watch that. I mean, let's kind of see how this plays out. It's going to be an interesting year to see uh, how this El Nino compares to uh, previous events. See if it's comparable to 2000, uh, was it 2015, 2016, and 1990. Ooh, I remember a big one back in the late 90s there. We had a, a pretty good El Nino event. Lots of flooding going on here in Northern California and some high wind. Pretty active winter conditions back then. So we'll just kind of see how the El Nino pattern plays out here uh, this winter. All right, uh, guys, I think uh, I'm going to call it uh, far as active uh, tropical systems go. There's not a whole lot. There's a, a little disturbance out here, potential cyclone development in the next 48 hours at 20%. So not for certain if that's going to develop or not. The Eastern Pacific, well, um, you got this tropical storm down here. Uh, looks like maximum sustained winds there around 45 miles per hour. Not a huge storm. And also a little chance of uh, some development down here well off the coast of Mexico there into the Pacific. But uh, for the most part, looks like we're starting to uh, drop off there in the uh, tropical developments as we head into the uh, northern hemisphere winter. Uh, one area I forgot to check here is New Zealand. As far as earthquake activity goes, I don't mean to, uh, but I'm really not seeing anything major going on down there in terms of, uh, earthquake activity. I'll give a quick glance here across the New Zealand map. Looks like a couple smaller earthquakes here in the last few hours. Some threes and twos, it looks like, scattered, uh, around the plate boundary. Uh, for the most part, though, things are, uh, like they're a little on the calm side. There's some of that earthquake activity showing up here, but I'm not seeing any broad, wide-scale major events going on. No major swarms that I can see across the area. And a look at, uh, once again, look at the USGS monitored volcanoes. Well, um, not a whole lot of newcomers here to the, uh, the eventful map. Still got this one up here. Into the Alaska, the Aleutian Trench area, uh, that's continuing to see a little bit of elevated activity around the Great Sakin Volcano. Slow eruption of lava likely continues in this area. There is some uh, ash cloud emissions going on, and uh, you can see that there on the, uh, well, this is a hypothetical eruption, ash cloud height forecast as it uh, scoots off there into the Pacific. These are basically a, a forecasted model. Not an official forecast, but uh, kind of neat that they're uh, at least doing some type of experiment uh, with the volcanoes up there. As far as predicting uh, uh, cloud height or ash cloud height and whatnot. All right, folks, I'm jumping off here. Uh, it's a little late here on my end, about 11.13 California time. I'm going to call it a night and we'll see you guys back here tomorrow. All the seismograph stations right now look pretty calm. Not a whole lot of activity, but things tend to stir up overnight when I'm sleeping. Take care, folks, and stay safe out there. Chat you guys tomorrow sometime.